Hello and welcome to your first web scraping tutorial. I'm Frank and I'm going to be taking you through this today. Um, just to start off, the IDE I'm using is Spider and we are coding in Python, um, specifically 2.7 today. Um, you can get this IDE via the Anaconda um, package in, provided by Continuum Analytics. I'm going to link that in the description and just to give you guys a look at kind of when we open up the program uh, or the Anaconda Navigator rather you can see the IDE is right here um, it also comes with RStudio as well um, actually I don't think this is installed yet on mine but you can install it pretty easily via um, the Anaconda Navigator but we also have the Jupyter Notebook and you can also make separate environments for Python 2 and Python 3 um, I'm probably gonna make a video on that later but it comes in pretty useful when there's modules only for Python 2 or 3 or vice versa um, but anyways let's get started so web scraping what is it basically you're just extracting data from a page I'm not gonna complicate it much more than that um, nowadays there can be many practical uses for it. Um, one very practical use that I know a lot of people use um, is to get free stock data but the issue is it's not typically historical end-of-day data um, just for the day so when we see this provided by Yahoo um, right here also side note by the way Yahoo, I believe, has deprecated its API, so you can no longer um, get data or historical data via that. So that's a kind of a sad note for you guys relying on that. But Google Finance, I believe, still has some remnants of theirs left. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so mostly the data that people are mining nowadays from the web is a little more granular, which basically means you can, in this case, um, see it in a little smaller of intervals. Uh, so a lot of the algorithmic traders want minute by minute data and it's usually much more granular than that um, Especially if you're on Wall Street or something like that or at a big firm big hedge fund um, But there's plenty of practical uses for it. That's just one example um, One thing before we get started um, I just want you guys to know Before you do start web scraping and if you go on and this is the only tutorial you watch which is perfectly fine just note that um, you may have a chance of getting blacklisted, which basically means that you're going to be banned from the server for life or for a long time. So the way you find that out, um, and I'm going to show this example because it's a pretty well-known website, but, oh, actually, I'm sorry, it's not Morningstar. Um, it is Seeking Alpha. And we're going to type in terms and conditions. Okay, so terms of use. So, just to speed this up, um, we'll type in webs, or actually, crawl, okay, awesome. So, here we go. Um, this is the section, so it might be in a user conduct section in one of these pages you're looking at, but just be mindful if they allow you to scrape data, which this one does not, um, as can clearly be seen right here, but, so... Seeking Alpha does not allow you to do this, and I've tried it, and it blocks you from it. Um, there's ways to circumvent it, but odds are if you're doing web scraping in kind of <laughs> a sort of an industrial scale, you're probably going to get blacklisted. Um, you just got to know that if they do allow you to web scrape, they probably will provide an API. So that's another thing to keep in mind. For those of you who don't know what an API is, it's an application programming interface, and that basically without going into the semantics or technicals of it. Um, that's basically just a way to get data from you as a client, basically. So um, anyways, let's get started. The page we're going to be going to today, uh, we'll type in Yahoo Finance, and we will type in Apple up here. And what I want you guys to do is copy the URL after this is loaded, because this takes forever on Yahoo. OK. So what we're going to do um, is assign the URL to a variable. And I'm assuming most of you guys have experience programming um, in Python. I'm still going to go through it and make sure that even a beginner could go through this and understand it. But anyways, um, so what we're doing right here is assigning the URL to a variable. And we need a way to open the URL now in order to harvest the data we want. And this is the extent of this tutorial, basically. I'm just going to go over a couple methods of opening the URL. Um, so... Um, the first thing we want to do uh, before we even do anything further is we need to import some libraries. So we need, for this purpose, um, we're going to use the URL lib2 um, library. And what we want to say is from URL lib2, 
import URL open, and this is going to allow us to open this URL. So we're going to assign a variable HTML to this. So and then we're going to say URL URL lib two dot URL open. My God, I cannot spell. There we go. And then URL. And what we want to put at the end of this is dot read, and that's going to convert it to a string. So this should be okay. Ignore that line. Um, it's not a big deal. So we're going to print the HTML because it's already converted to a string. And if we get a response, it should be perfect. That means we have the HTML. So awesome. There's our HTML right there. Um, now we did it programmatically. You can also see what's under the hood um, in the page also by right clicking and viewing the page source. So this is going to be the HTML that's going to look like a big pile of mumbo jumbo. But that's basically what we just got. Um, and there's another way to look at it too. You can highlight an element and then right click and inspect. And that'll show you a little more cleaned up version of the HTML um, sorted by tag. It's, it's a little easier to see. And when you start really extracting certain parts from the data, um, you're going to be using this a lot. Um, and we're going to be using this tab a lot as well, especially the network tab later on um, because most of our scraping programs are going to get a little more advanced and require a little more attention to detail but anyways so that is basically the extent of this tutorial the only thing I have to say other than this is this is not the only way to open up a URL in Python um, there's a lot of other ways again size is everything with web scraping if you're building a massive industrial strength web scraper or crawler or whatever you want to call it, um, you're going to have to consider what you're using to open up the URL. So you can also use the request library, which is fantastic for um, JSON because it comes with a basically automated JSON. Um, con uh, it's an encoder basically that allow you to get JSON from the web page. Um, so that comes in handy. And you can also use um, Mechanize. So just to type it out. So what that allows you to do is interact with the web page. Um, it's a little different than Selenium, which we're going to go into later for browser automation. But uh, I'm not going to go into opening URLs in this. But if I have a personal preference, it would most likely be request. And just for the extent of this tutorial, I'm going to just open a URL with request right now. So all you got to do to do it um, is uh, HTML equals request dot get and this is a get request um, you can also use a post request but there be no need to use a post request in this scenario um, I'll go into that later as well <laughs> what those terms mean I'm not gonna do this in this tutorial but uh, and we want to print HTML dot text so that's it in request um, it's just another way to do it and we're gonna go into why you'd be using one or the other in later ones um, or later videos but yeah I think this just about wraps it up for this tutorial. Um, so rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.